this is a picture of my grandmother. She's 94 years old and grew up in abject poverty in Louisiana. She is my first innovation expert. Before there was Julia Childs or Top Chef or Iron Chef, there was Geneva. And Geneva was magic with food. I'm talking about chicken toes or pig feet or cow brains. It didn't matter. Geneva could turn food scraps into food fantasies. And even to this day, she can do amazing things with extreme limits. And this is important because black folks like poor people and lots of other people of color and working people around the world have had to master the art of turning adversity into opportunity. That's what soul food is really about, isn't it? In Cuba, they call it inventos, making something out of nothing. And that's what my grandmother taught me, how to do more with less. And that's what I've come to talk to all of you about today. How do we innovate our way out of poverty? How can innovation out of poverty help solve some of the world's greatest social problems with respect to climate change, urbanization, poverty, and hunger? And how are our ghettos, our slums, our barrios, hotbeds of innovation that can help us imagine and reimagine safer, smarter, and more sustainable cities. Now, these are important questions because by the year 2050, the majority of the world's population is going to be living in cities. The fastest growing cities are not skyscraper cities, but rather informal settlements, ghettos and slums. And we can either keep doing what we've been doing, which is viewing the people who come to these cities in search of jobs and a better life and are forced to live in ghettos and slums as eight billion or one billion, excuse me, social problems, or we can begin to do something different and view them as one billion solutions. Because there is genius in the ghetto there is genius in the hood. There is genius in the barrio. Given massive demographic shifts and rapid urbanization, where do you think our next scientists, architects, artists, and design teams are going to come from? Many of them are going to be coming from these informal settlements. Now, if you want to talk about innovation, it's important that we visualize it. So what you're looking at now is a global map of innovation from outer space, brought to you by Toby Shopshack. And it's really easy to see where innovation is happening. You see all the places with the lights, bright and shiny, all the electricity. That's where innovation isn't happening. So where is innovation happening? Well, my research and scholarship and experience over the past several years has examined how our jails, our prisons, our ghettos, our favelas, and low-income neighborhoods around the world are hotbeds of innovation. And I'm not just talking about folks with PhDs or MBAs or JDs or MDs. Many of the people who I've spoken to, who I've broken bread with, who I've researched, they didn't go to school at all. Their lab was the street. I call these folks streetwise. And let's see how they are innovating their way out of poverty. So who is this? This is Pashawn Murray, founder of Detroit Dirt. And the major problem that she faced is that no other city in the United States has undergone the dramatic population decline, abandonment, and urban decay as the city of Detroit. 
her solution? Why don't we divert tons of waste? Leaves, manure, restaurant waste. Turn it into compost. Take the compost and build beautiful community gardens and urban farms. By embodying an innovation out of poverty mindset, she shows us that composting, community gardens and community farms can lower transportation gaps, can transform food deserts into food oasis, can reduce environmental footprints, can create businesses and help us regain a sense of pride in the power of place. Now the problems in the Bay Area are not abandoned buildings, but rather in our tech-driven, consumption-oriented, uber-sized economy, food delivery services that shuttle gourmet meals from door to door are a dime a dozen. But this woman, Sabrina Mutakisna's Town Kitchen, incubated by my nonprofit that I co-found and direct, iSeed, is changing that. Now the problem that Sabrina saw is that restaurant workers are some of the most exploited workers in the country, earning on average $2.13 an hour. So the cruel irony is that many of the people who serve us our food cannot afford to eat in the places where they work. Her solution, why don't we combine two of the things that the Bay Area does perhaps better than any other place in the world? Food and tech, food tech. Why not become the Uber of food, except with a twist? Instead of just hiring a bunch of rich kids, why not be operated by low-income youth in everything from cooking to packaging, to distribution, to delivery, to building mobile apps. The town kitchen steadily employs 43 Oakland youth, ages 17 to 24, and at the same time, offers them college credit for participating in their programs. In this way, the town kitchen shows us how we can innovate our way out of poverty by simultaneously building college and career pathways, paying living wages, local hires, creating the next generation of innovators, entrepreneurs, and restaurateurs from low-income communities and communities of color. Now, from these examples, you might be thinking, he's only talking about innovation out of poverty in the United States, but I am not. Innovation out of poverty is happening everywhere. Let's go to Africa, for example, a rapidly urbanizing continent where 230,000 people are moving to cities each week. Where are all these people going to live? Luckily, the Moladi building system has come up with a green solution to this problem that I call Legos for adults. Now, what you're looking at is a reusable plastic mold that allows everyday people like you and I to build a house in one, in one day. What makes this so powerful and so special is that this durable, sustainable, lightweight material is as easy to put together as Legos. Now, what's important here is that this is a great example of a low-cost, high-impact, scalable solution that is not only helping many countries in Africa, but is being used by 25 other countries all around the world to innovate their way out of poverty. And let me be clear why I think this is so important. And I think Maslow says it best. If you don't take care of people's physiological needs, their access to food, shelter, clean air, and clean water, you inhibit 
their ability to self-actualize and reach their full potential. And speaking of clean air and water, let's go to Lima, Peru, where a region of the world where the humidity is so high that it only receives one inch of rainfall per year. To deal with this challenge, brilliant students designed a giant advertising billboard that absorbs air humidity and converts it into purified water, generating 90 liters of water per day. These students are amazing, and they remind us of something we can so easily forget, that even though it's invisible, water is always in the air. You just got to know how to tap into it. Or how about if we go to this favela in Brazil, where a women's-owned worker co-op builds beautiful chandeliers and crystals and exports them to leading global designers around the world, both improving the livelihood of the families in the favela and at the same time demonstrating the importance of women-owned businesses in low-income communities. Now, I want to be clear. Innovation out of poverty is not the same thing as frugal innovation or reverse innovation. Frugal innovation is about reducing cost and operation. Reverse innovation is about innovation seen first in the developing world and then is sp it spreads, is marketed and is scaled in the so-called developed world. Innovation out of poverty is innovation born out of necessity anywhere in the world. It don't matter whether it's the developing world or the developed world. And there's other important differences too, like the motivation for the innovation in reverse or frugal innovation, profit over people. Whereas in innovation out of poverty, the motivation for innovation is people over profit while still meeting the triple bottom line. And the flow of capital in, innova in, in reverse innovation and frugal innovation goes straight into the corporation. It's an extraction model. Whereas innovation out of poverty, the flow of capital goes straight into the community. It is an investment model in terms of human capital, social capital, economic capital, and cultural capital. And finally, the, the structure of ownership in frugal and reverse lies squarely with the multinational corporation. Whereas in innovation out of poverty, the structure of ownership could be peer-to-peer -peer networks, open source networks, worker co-ops, shareable cities, expanding the roots of collaborative consumption. All right, I've given you lots of examples of innovation out of poverty and how our ghettos and slums are hotbeds of innovation all around the world. And these bottom-up strategies raise really interesting questions about how can we build greener, safer, smarter, and more sustainable cities? Will we design our cities for rich people or for poor people? For people of color or for white folks? for eco-haves or eco-have-nots? And who will have a say in how we design our cities of the future? Powerful elites or everyday people? Innovation out of poverty suggests that instead of designing our cities for the 1%, we start to design our cities for the 100%. The mother of innovation has never been a few isolated individuals like Henry Ford or Ikea who democratize consumption, but rather the roots of innovation have always been fueled by millions of grassroots people who are creating new ways of surviving and thriving and thus are helping to democratize consumption and democratize production. Now, I know many of you are wondering, how do you apply 
an innovation out of poverty framework to your own community? How can you adopt the mantra of doing more with less? So I've gleaned five principles from innovation out of poverty around the world that you can apply to your own life. The first one is the defining factor is never resources. It's always resourcefulness. The second one is innovation is not as much an evolutionary process as it is a revolutionary process. And the best innovations are ones that make people's lives healthier, happier, more meaningful and resilient. Third, local knowledge matters. And is more important, or as important, and I would suggest more important, than professional or scientific knowledge. Fourth, master Taoism. And I don't really mean Taoism in terms of Eastern philosophy. Well, I kind of do, actually. But here I mean Taoism in terms of turning adversity into opportunity. And since all of us who are listening have, it, have at least one time in our lives turned adversity into opportunity, each one of us can teach each other. And finally, and my grandmother would kill me if I didn't end with this one, always listen to your grandmother. <laughs> grandma knows best. And, and what I mean by that is, here, grandma represents respecting and honoring the past, respecting and honoring people, and respecting and honoring the planet. Thank you very much.